Hey everybody, welcome back aboard the USS Pickerel. We're picking up right where we left off last time, right at the tail end of this major surface engagement between the invading Japanese forces and the combined American, British, Dutch, and Australian fleet, the ABDA Task Force. And there is the task force, or what remains of it, out to our north right there on the horizon. Still looking like they're in combat, I see what I think are rounds going off from those cruisers. But they're pulling away from us, though we're at 18 knots up here on the surface, but those cruisers are opening the gap, so they've really poured on the coal, and they're uh, leaving the area heading north. Out to our left here, to the west, we have the remains of the Japanese forces as well. So several fleets still in the area, maybe. Um, and I would like to try to get in on this battle and do our part still. We've only been observing up till now. So I'm going to try to close on whatever's remaining and maybe try to get some shots off. So we'll see what's going on Ship here. Spotted. Oh man, just lifeboats littering the ocean here. There's one out there at 340. Yeah, and I can see it very well. Unsure of what side it's from, that might be Japanese. Oh, there's another destroyer. The remains of one smoking out at 320. The bow is just up. I think it's probably, uh, the, the stern is probably grounded on the seabed there. And there's that Kuma light cruiser out beyond it still. Still in the area, so... Maybe that's a target that we can still get a crack at. That would be worth our time pursuing. Enough time has elapsed and we're still tracking one or several fleets, so let's go ahead and report them back in to HQ. We'll give them an update on what remains. There we go, you can see there's the that's the Kuma leading this whole line out to the left, and this unknown to the north must be uh, the last of the friendly fleet that we're seeing, I think right there on the horizon. And it looks like they're still firing, the Kuma might actually be engaged with those guys. So, 30 degrees out to the right, we're going to open up the distance, and uh, we'll maybe try to parallel that line, see how long we can keep up with these fleets until maybe... They either turn around and come back, or they disappear completely. We're down to 64% battery, so staying on the surface for a while for some recharging would certainly help. Oh, what's this? We've got a Japanese destroyer heading towards us, uh, not directly at us, but in our general direction. And what looks like a second one on the horizon as well, so he's about five miles away, but this guy is only about two to three miles and closing. Does he see us? No, that's that sinking destroyer again. It looks like the rest are still processional they're in their battle line heading north. There's the Kuma. But maybe we should put our stern to this guy. Minimize our profile. Because he is awfully close. We saw some suspicious activity last time from the escorts. Almost as if someone had some radar. So we can't discount that. That maybe some of these destroyers even are picking up our radar return. There, so we've got our stern to this guy. This is a Fubuki-class destroyer, from what I can tell. It's got this rounded, sort of bulbous superstructure. The bridge out front, it's got two funnels, and the, uh, the aerial masts look about right. So I've started tracking him. I've set up a down-the-throat torpedo shot, so if he maybe does see us and comes after us, we could score ourselves a destroyer kill. Yeah, he is so close. He's, like, right in our wake. Not attacking yet. Um, we'll stay up on the surface for a few more seconds. I'm sort of baiting him, maybe goading him into a fight. If they see us just as we're getting down, they'll come to our location and we could maybe put some torpedoes into him. Yes, sir. 
All right, that's about as close as I want to cut it. Periscope depth. Periscope Down we go. Dive, dive. Current depth, four, zero. Pretty tricky business to engage destroyers, but I would really like to get a piece of the action here. We're just, the, the battle has passed us by. I, I would like to say that we helped out a little bit. Let us see now if he's taken the bait. Or if he saw anything at all. Yes, Again, sir. might have just been routine. Could have been coming to check on survivors from the other ships even. Certainly in real life, I would be using that to my advantage, prowling under the waves, waiting for ships to stop, to pick up survivors, to torpedo them while they're stationary. Probably not going to happen here in the game, but we'll see what's, uh, what's up with this guy. Oh, what's this? Oh, I thought he was turning right at us, giving us zero degrees, but it actually looks like he's turning hard to port. And is now heading back to our right. Back to the north, perhaps. Of course, I can hardly see anything through the waves here. There we go. Oh, yeah, look at that huge wake out the back. He is full throttle. And he has turned away from where we were. So, did he lose us? Perhaps on radar and is now giving up the chase? Or again, is this just random patrolling? Yes, sir. No course. Well, we'll turn back up to the yes, north sir. as well then and go back to paralleling their course because it seems like maybe that's what this fleet is continuing to do. Oh yeah, he is out of here fast. Well, shit, so much for that torpedo chance. That was looking like it was turning into something, and then it did not. <laughs> it de-escalated very quickly. Current depth, 8-0. Okay, after tracking those fleets for a while, they've moved so far to the north, we're not even hearing them on the hydrophones anymore. So I'm going to turn back to the west. Actually, let's see if we can pick them up manually. Oh, there's some stuff. Out to the west still. Those Contact. are Warship. big screws. Closing. Bearing two seven five. Long Bearing range. Two, seven, five. Yes, sir. Ahead stand. Could those yes, sir. be those heavies that are still out there? Yes, sir. I intend to find out. Back up at periscope depth now. The scope is up, breaking the surface. We're about 20 minutes until 7 now, so you can see the sunset is uh, turning the entire sky orange. Magnificent sunset up there, fiery. Oh, look at this. We have a destroyer searching. He's got searchlights on, possibly that same one that I was targeting. I think that's him. But now he's moved far to the north. Well out of range, but is searching with his lights on. Now those other contacts... There they are, they're off to our left. 
and some fast screws out at 20 degrees. Yeah, there we go. That is the low thrum of a large ship, I think. Huh. That one destroyer still not sinking. There must be air trapped in the bow. It's just sort of perpetually nose up. Ah, a bit of smoke over the horizon right there. Can't see where it's coming from at the moment, but it looks like... Could be a double stack. Out at 300. We'll keep an eye on that. Mm. Not seeing anything else. Oh. Oh, that's the other destroyer. That's the stern up in the air. Yes, sir. Surface the boat. All right, so we're pretty clear. Surface, surface, surface. So we're coming back up to the surface, and we're going to close at high speed because those ships that I can hear on the hydrophone are clearly more than, like, 8 or 10 miles away because I can't even see the masts over the horizon, so they're pretty far out, so we'll try to get nice and close. sun almost touching the horizon now. And somewhere out there to the left are those enemy ships. Ah, in fact, there's one. I can actually see him now over the horizon. And you know it will help a little bit more. Let's go with a high periscope. That gives us the extra, you know, whatever, 20 or 30 feet to be able to look up over the horizon even more. Okay, it looks like it's just a destroyer, actually. I thought it might have been something bigger, but I guess not. Uh, there's more smoke. Another destroyer. Clearly heading in the opposite direction from the other fleet that we were tracking, though, so these guys are heading off to our left instead of our right. Well, let's keep an eye on them. Let's see what develops. Sun has set now. We're on the uh, we're on our red night lighting. A departure from our blue night lighting from the S boat, and we're just five minutes before seven. Proceeding along, patrolling, looking for these other contacts. Hey, there we go. That's a big ship. That's a light cruiser. Looks like another three stacked. Kuma or similar light cruiser. More smoke. Oh! There they are. There's the heavy cruisers. We found them again. Yes! So let's re identify these guys. These are Takao heavy cruisers. Takao is actually the correct pronunciation, I guess. Named after. Uh, a mountain just outside of Kyoto. So, two Takao's. Oh man, I'm having a hell of a time keeping them locked up here, too. They keep unlocking. There, just did it again. Shit, this is uh, wreaking havoc with my spotting measurements here. But, okay, well, we've got them there. It looks like maybe they're heading uh, back to the north or maybe even northeast. Wow, are these guys going to sail right in front of our tubes? How amazing would that be?
Oh, wow. Passing right by this dying destroyer. Gotta watch out for stuff like this, I guess. In the wake of a large battle, you've got all these navigation hazards. Especially for us submarines, if we were to submerge, uh, this water is not that deep. Who knows what we might accidentally hit down there. Alright, right to the top of the funnels. Still just over the horizon, I guess. That's fine. There we go, there's our three minute mark. So we'll get ourselves a speed estimation of these guys. 2050s, so like 20 and a half knots or 21 knots. Good. Well, we'll go ahead and enter, uh, where is it? 21 on the TDC. And it does appear that these guys are zigzagging still, so we'll have to take that into account. But they are, generally speaking, heading north. Another life raft going by in the binoculars off to the left. There they are. Behold, we do have a rough course for these guys, and I cannot believe our luck, but they're heading right towards us, heading up to the north here, so uh, setting up a parallel course for a few miles, and then we'll maybe cut into them. This is really exciting, because I was just saying last episode how it's so rare to see a, uh, a big, heavy warship. The ocean is so big, it's very rare for this to happen. And after losing our chance on these guys last time, now they're coming right back around, right into our crosshairs. Uh, how far? So we're, we're actually 7,000 yards off from their track. They're doing 21 knots, an average of 21 knots. They are zigzagging, but we can really only match yes, sir. up to 19 on the surface. So I think actually the longer we parallel the more distance we're going to lose. So maybe... What would be a 3,000 yard range there? That would be a decent shot. Let's just cut in right now. We'll head due northwest and just begin the intercept now. I think the longer we wait, the more at a disadvantage we'll actually be. Now's a good time to call up GQ. Rack everybody out. Yes, sir. And I want to move around a couple of guys here to make up my little attack party. So here we've got, by by moving a few fellows around, we have one of the watch officers on the plot, as would have been done in real life. That's really who's updating all of our maps and our plots here, you know, in the game. Um, although, obviously, it wouldn't be real time like we see, but it was an officer's job to process all the incoming sensor information and mark the situation on the plot. Usually it was the junior, the most junior officer on board, although sometimes two guys would do it. But it's a pretty tedious job, so it normally would go to the lowest man on the totem pole. So that's what I've set up there. For the general quarters set up, I would like to move one of the officers into the conning tower to work the plot, and the other officer is down working the TDC. Manipulating the game just a little bit to sort of recreate a real-life 
attack party. Not that it makes that much of a difference, but it's just kind of fun to put some guys in the correct positions. Boy, oh boy, these heavy seas are a real pain in the ass trying to get these measurements. Ship spotted. Ship spotted. Bearing two, seven. Well, I think that's about right. It's close enough. I mean, these guys are still off on the horizon line. By the time they're close enough to be taking the real important measurements, yes, we will be submerged and we can take them through the periscope. Yes, sir. They still have escort ships. There is the Kuma light cruiser. There must be a second one, though, because I think that first one we saw was way far to the north. So, a second Kuma, many destroyers. Although, they sort of seem like they're all on the far side of the heavies. So, let's turn right in now. And let's head right for that intercept point as we come around. We will hit periscope depth and make a high speed run into that firing circle. Okay, down to 9,400 yards now. Ship spotted. Just clearing out to my right. Nothing out there. You can see how much darker the sky is over on our right side, though. So hopefully uh, we're blending into that. Although we do have this giant conning tower that we have to look out for, uh, like I talked about last time. Before they started cutting it away later in the war, the conning tower made the sub very noticeable. We shan't stay on the surface for too much longer. There we go, waterline to the top of the funnels. 7,100 yards now. And they are estimating 62 knots, so I think slightly faster than the ship is capable of, so we're just going to ignore that. We'll stick with my estimate of 21 knots for the moment, because that remains fairly reasonable. Hmm. The blinker light is going sort of crazy up there. I hope that's not an indication that they've seen us, but they're not shooting at us yet. But let's not push our luck yes, sir. anymore. Down Dive. we go. Dive. We've closed as much as I dare to on the surface at high speed. Now we'll go down to periscope depth, or slightly under, and continue making our way in. We're actually just outside the 3,000 yard circle. Maintaining flank speed, if we can get to anywhere less than 2,000, between two and 1,500 yards for the shot, that would be great. There they are coming right at us. Holy shit, we might actually get a chance at this. These heavy cruisers can move very fast, so I'm going to do a four torpedo spread. Maximize our chances of trying to get a hit. If we can even just get one torpedo hit, that might slow her down 
enough where we can make a follow-up attack as all of the tubes are coming open. If we miss, I mean, this might be the, the only chance that we get at a big heavy like this, so I do not want to lose the opportunity. Along that same vein, I've also readjusted my torpedo depth. I do not trust these Mark 14s to go under the keel anymore, so I've actually redirected their depth to be up just a few feet higher than her draft. So we're going to try to go for impact detonations. As we just cross under what I think is 5,000 yards, having a really hard time seeing again through these yes, sir. goddamn waves. So give me another five feet on the depth, please. And I know we're still at flank speed right now. We're at seven knots. We're probably throwing up a huge plume uh, from the periscope. But these are the times where you just have to make a calculated risk. And hope they're just not going to see us in the failing sunlight. So we are really, really close now. Probably only 2,000 yards away from their track. They're just coming into the bottom of the circle. Uh... 4,000 yards on the TDC. Let's take another reading as they go through the 45 degree mark. Thirty five hundred yards. Getting very, very close. There you can see the torpedo set at 13 feet. And we'll begin our spread. Two degrees left. Mm, actually. No, you know what? I want to go two degrees right because I want the first torpedo to be coming at her bow. So we'll go two degrees right, and then we'll do center, and then we'll do two degrees left, and then we'll do the fourth torpedo at zero degree gyro again, just in case her wiggle waggling defeats the aim of the first torpedo. Maybe the second one will come in and smack her. Look, she's 90 degrees. She is directly perpendicular to us now, just coming down to 3,000 yards. Let's do this. Fire one. Firing to launch. Torpedo in the water. Fire First is away. Second, right on the zero bearing. Now away, doing two degrees left for number three. Torpedo in the water. Firing to three. There goes three. And back to zero for four. There we go. Spread is away. 90 degrees. Turn to the right. Back down to full periscope depth. Still at flank speed. Pushing us through the turn as we're skidding around back to the north. And we'll start setting up our aft tubes as necessary. Here comes a stopwatch down past. One minute to go. Scope down. We're just going to listen. And hope they don't see us and change their course at the last second. You can just feel the tension now inside the compartment. Coming up on 30 seconds until the impact. Just counting down in the silence now. Will they hit? Will they miss? And it's a hit! Just forward of center. Right underneath the forward turrets. And there's a second one back aft. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Contact. Warship. Closing. Bearing. Two, nine, nine. Walking. Wow, she was almost 45 degrees to us. Two solid hits on a heavy cruiser. The Takao is now burning like crazy. Fires forward and aft. As we're coming uh, back around to the north, paralleling their course, we're going to see... If she's going to keep soldiering on. All of her searchlights are on. Looks like they're all looking off to the port side. Thinking that maybe we are over there. Which obviously we're not. We're going to mark her here in case she starts to drift. We're going to have to see what her speed does. Those are pretty ginormous hits. Um, may or may not have affected her propulsion. 
The second Takao in the back, veering off, going wide left. Fires burning just under the forward turret there, and amidships under the rear stack, so right near the engine rooms, potentially. Star shells up in the sky, all the searchlights on. They are looking for us, but this Takao has slowed way down. I think we've done major damage to her. Ooh, listing heavily off to starboard. And number three shaft is out of commission. So she's only on three props right now. So we did do major internal damage to her. One of her engine rooms down. Look, she's slowing even more as we're watching, waiting. Decks are awash. Okay, they're off uh, parallel to our left now, just at our 9 o'clock. Scope back up. Let's take a look around, see what we've got to see here. I see fire coming through the waves already. There we go. Wow, huge plumes of smoke. The second Takao racing past the first one. She is almost dead in the water, I think. Oh, she's presenting a perfect profile for a second shot, too. But of course, not with our aft torpedoes. But centered back on our main target, I'll be happy with even one heavy cruiser at this point. They're saying down to 13 knots. I think it's significantly less than 13 knots. I think she's barely moving. I mean, we're doing seven knots under the water here. Oh, God, look how close she is. Oh, and an escort destroyer out on the far side. But nobody's rushing over here just yet. I'm just worried about finishing off this kill. Absolutely. Yes, sir. New course. So hopefully she's going to continue to slow down. We're going to race past her at seven knots and bring the aft torpedoes to bear. I'll plunk her with two more fish and then we'll dive and get the hell out of here. Although, she is not looking great already. Ooh, is she looking at us? Scope down. As the searchlights are tracking back and forth in our general direction, we'll just hang out under the waves here with the scope down for a few seconds as we pass by. Alright, she is completely stopped. She's dead in the water. All engines have stopped and she has zero way on the ship. The entire bow is going underneath. I think she's sinking. I think we've dealt her a killing blow. But I'm making ready those aft torpedoes just in case. Because we might need to finish her off. Twenty seven hundred yards now. Oh yeah, speed of two. Yes, sir. I had one third. And she might not even be doing that. So uh looks like she's just coming parallel with us now, getting ready to fire probably both F tubes, maybe just one actually. We'll see. We'll just try to get her right middle of target and finish her off. Her signal light frantically flashing still, but being completely left behind by the other Japanese ships. Forward weather decks completely submerged now as she rides up and down on the waves. Ooh, even the tops of the turrets are going underwater. Okay, we've got a good angle on the aft torpedo tube, so we're going to whip around to the right, line up for a zero deflection shot. Whoa, explosions! Oh, she's going down! Boilers are exploding as water comes down into the engine rooms. Oh, and she's... <laughs> 
and she rolls over, capsizes completely. We have just killed a Takao heavy cruiser. Dozens of lifeboats just everywhere. It sounds like she smacked into the bottom. I think she hit bottom on the way down. That was that big cacophony that we heard. And now she's just exploding underwater as her survivors are rowing away. Yes, sirree, Bob. We just got ourselves. Yes, a heavy cruiser. <laughs> I'm so excited. from battle stations. That was something like 13,000 tons. That was a huge, huge warship. And I think now is the time to not press our luck. Keep in mind, this is the same day that we left port. We left port at like 7 this morning, and it's only 8 o'clock at night. Um, all of this happened like within hours of exiting Java. So I think with all the torpedoes that we've expended at this point, we just go back to port, reload our tubes and our stores, and then head back out to sea, and then try to finally get to our patrol point. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to slink off to the east. We're down to 52% battery power, down to one third. We'll go deep and we'll run silent and we'll get away from these few escorts that are hanging around. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rig for silent running. Woo, depth charges in the water. But no threat to us. This escort is far to our south. Way down there. Uh, I guess sort of in the area that we fired from, but definitely not the area that we're at now. So we have killed that heavy cruiser. They don't have a clue where we are. And most of the fleet has moved on, continued up to the north, maybe pursuing the Allied Abda fleet. And they've detached, like, one or two escorts to maybe half-heartedly look for us, but they'll probably bug out of the area soon enough also to join up back with their ships that they're supposed to be escorting. So we are just on our way back to Surabaya now for that reload that I was talking about. So that's pretty much it for this episode, other than the short cruise back to base. We've now done two whole episodes on this patrol, and we haven't even made it to our assigned patrol area yet, which is pretty crazy. But we've got the phonograph playing, the crew is in a jubilant mood. We're 116 miles away from base, so once we get back up on the surface, I'm just going to run at flank speed at 19 knots. It's only going to take us six hours to get back there. So by early morning, we will return to Surabaya spend a few hours reloading, and maybe by sunrise we'll be back on our way out of here. So join me then as we get back underway for our second leaving on this particular patrol, and we'll see how the USS Pickerel will continue to fare.